This is Skyblock. You're on an island of dirt and grass in the middle of the void. You can obtain almost every item and beat the game because you get a tree and a chest with some bare necessities. But what if you didn't? Could you still beat the game? In the last video, I created a huge platform of snow and got 5 emeralds from foxes. In this video, I'm going to get infinite wood by trading with a wandering trader for an oak sapling or a moss block. Easier said than done though, over the course of recording this video, I would find out just how difficult it is to get a wandering trader to spawn. How do wandering traders spawn though? Well, Minecraft has a 20 minute timer, and every time it hits zero, it tries to spawn a wandering trader. But it's no guarantee. No, far from it actually. There are multiple requirements Minecraft has to have fulfilled before a wandering trader can spawn. First, there's just a flat 7.5% chance that Minecraft even moves past this point and tries to spawn a wandering trader. If the 7.5% chance does get fulfilled though, Minecraft will look in a 96 by 96 block area centered around the player and randomly select a block. Secondly, so long as it's possible for a wandering trader to spawn there, meaning it isn't a bottom slab, glass, leaves, or most importantly for this challenge, void, the wandering trader will spawn. And finally, if it can't, Minecraft will do this same check again up to 10 times. If all the checks fail, then the wandering trader spawn timer will reset and the process will start all over again. So, back in Skyblock, if I want a wandering trader to spawn, I could just wait around and hope one spawns, but that could take an extremely long time. So, what I'm gonna do instead is use a tool called NBT Explorer to look at the wandering trader spawn timer and wait until it's at 1200 ticks, or one minute. Because that's the lowest it'll ever go before trying to spawn a wandering trader, since the timer only changes in 1200 tick intervals. So, once the timer is at 1200, I'll create 50 copies of the world file, then go through all of them individually and wait one minute so the timer will hit zero and Minecraft will try and spawn a wandering trader. Okay, so, finally, the wandering trader spawn delay is at 1200 ticks, which means I can take this world, make a backup of it. Now if I go to my backups, take this most recent one, I can paste it a bunch of times. And now I can go back in. I will start the timer, run towards the middle of the island, and then after around a minute or a little more, if a wandering trader hasn't spawned, then the backup is a fail, and I'll just try the next backup. So, as you can see, no wandering traders spawned in those 50 attempts, but that could just be bad luck, so I did another 50. I again got no wandering traders after another set of 50 attempts, so I was starting to think I was doing something wrong. So I did some research on how wandering traders spawn, and came across a bug report saying that wandering traders can't spawn on snow covered biomes. I really didn't want to do more potentially flawed and useless attempts, so I decided that I was going to get 3 to 400 snow blocks, then build out a platform outside of the snowy taiga biome, then do more attempts there and hopefully get a wandering trader to actually spawn. Now, 3 to 400 snow blocks is quite a lot, and recently, since the whole island had been getting so much bigger, it was becoming less and less common for a zombie with an iron shovel to spawn on the island, where I could actually kill them. So I decided to rework my system for getting and killing zombies. I used some wool blocks to make sure that zombies wouldn't fall off the edge on one side, then to deal with baby zombies, I placed string then a carpet over it to stand on, and for some reason, baby zombies can pathfind up onto it. After that, I placed some blocks at head height so mobs would only be able to see me when I wanted them to. And lastly, I connected the two islands together with some wool, and would place two more wool when I didn't want anything to be able to get across. Then, come nighttime, I'd be far enough away that only zombies would be able to see me, because for some reason, they can see the player from farther than other mobs. And, once I got a zombie to where I could hit it, similar to zombified piglins, all the other zombies would come and get trapped too, and eventually, one of them would have an iron shovel, and I would be able to hit that one to the front, then wait for it to burn until it was one hit away from dying, then I would make a backup and kill it until it drops the shovel with good durability. So, I did this until I had about 300 blocks of snow, and I was breaking my last shovel, 
Also, thank you to all my commenters from last video telling me that I could combine shovels to get an extra 5% durability. I genuinely didn't know this. And then I look up, and there's just a wandering trader. Oh my god, this is insane. I was just, like, randomly, like, picking up snowballs, and I turn around and there's a wandering trader. Um, so... I am going to make a backup just in case I die. I don't want to lose all my stuff. But... Okay, okay, okay. That's insane. So I looked at the trades and... Please, please. Yes! Yes! Moss! Let's go! Oh my god, that's insane! Right after I bought the moss, I logged off and checked my comments, and saw this. It was a comment detailing my exact problem. It explained that wandering traders can't spawn on snow layers. So, assuming that's true, the wandering trader wasn't spawning before, because there were snow layers everywhere, and once I mined them all, it was able to spawn. This wandering trader didn't sell anything else I wanted, but there was one more thing I could get from him. A bucket. Actually, come to think of it, at night? Um... A commenter brought this up in my last video. He'll drink a milk bucket, and uh, if I kill him while he's drinking it, I can get a bucket, which would save some time getting iron from killing zombies. So I built a structure around the wandering trader to trap him and protect myself from mobs. Then I got the wandering trader down to one hit away from dying. Then I waited until he drank the milk. then made a backup and killed him a few times until the milk bucket dropped. And now, we can get infinite wood by placing down these two moss blocks and bone mealing them. There we go. And then just bone meal this, and we get an azalea tree. And now, 78 days in, we can mine down our first tree. It's amazing the things we just take for granted, like having wood in a Minecraft world. And now we can replenish this, since it got turned into rooted dirt, we can replenish it just by bone mealing it. And now we can repeat that cycle to get infinite wood. And that, I think, is where I'm going to leave off this episode. So, obviously, the main thing is we have infinite wood now. And also, finally, we have a crafting table. which just unlocks so many possible crafts. Thank you guys so much for watching, and yeah, I'll see you in the next episode.